Hey guys, uh, I got another video for you today. We're gonna talk about what I would recommend you start off with. So you're just now getting into this stuff. You're going to make your first purchase. Uh, you don't know whether you should get a shotgun, rifle, handgun, what direction you should go, what support equipment you might need, that sort of thing. So um, if you're in an area where you're planning on concealed carrying because it's constitutional carry, or you're planning on getting your carry permit, I would recommend those people go with something like a handgun first. Uh, a good reliable handgun, I personally like Glock handguns because in my opinion they're the most reliable, most proven handguns on the market right now. Uh, I recommend going 9mm. Um, I'm not going to get into the caliber debate, but um, Billy Birdzell has a really good video where he goes over a bunch of the different studies that have been done throughout history. The Corruption surrounding some of them, uh, but also the real data around those as far as the effectiveness of the 9mm round. Also, um, there's plenty of independent testing done on that. I believe Lucky Gunner out of Utah has done some testing on longer range application of handguns, like 100 yards. What kind of terminal ballistics are we looking at? And the 147 grain 9mm did pretty darn well. It actually outperformed a lot of the 40 cal stuff. Um, and the, the 45 also outperformed the 40. And uh, the 9 and the 45 were about the same. So... Um, that said, let's go over my carry. Uh, this is my carry gun. I carry this with me every day. Um, this is a Glock 34. Uh, that's a 9mm Glock. Um, I carry it with a Surefire X300 Ultra. This is the Bravo with the uh, screw-on attachment here. Hollow Sun 507C. Um, red dot, no irons. Everything else is stock. I really don't do anything to the gun. Um, I carry Appendix. I carry in these T-Rex arms sidecar holsters. They tend to fit me really well, and I carry a spare mag uh, with some sort of extension on it. Uh, this one, I don't remember who makes this, but it's a 23-round mag, so it's pretty awesome. Um, this gives me a lot of capability. This gives me probably the most capability somebody could have with a pistol. Uh, does that mean you have to go out and buy the biggest gun you can find? No, but um, something like a five-shot snub nose revolver with a really short sight radius that's a little snappy, that's very limited on ammo, harder to uh, uh, reload and things like that is going to be more difficult for me to be proficient with. So I rather carry something that's a little bulkier, a little heavier, but be something that's worth it for me. That if I were in a shooting or in a gunfight, that it would be something that I am comfortable with that I know would give me all the capability I would want out of a pistol. Um, a lot of those smaller guns I, I tend to shy away from just because they lack shootability, they lack capacity, they can't uh, accommodate good flashlights and good optics uh, like the larger guns can. So that's kind of my two cents with that. Um, as far as the way I'm carrying appendix carry, for me, I found appendix carry to be safer uh, a manner of carry than uh, your typical three or four o'clock carry. Um, I also found that I could carry a larger gun if I appendix carry it and then things like uh, bending over to pick something up or sitting in a seat um, I didn't print as much, uh, and there's actually a lot of safety issues with using three or four, especially four o'clock guns sitting down or small of the back guns sitting down. Um, there's also some defensive tactics issues as far as defending those pistols. So if somebody finds out you are carrying a gun and tries to take it from you, it's a little easier to defend an appendix carry gun than it is something in a three or four o'clock. Um, it is something to get used to, though. Uh, it is a lifestyle change, and especially on a gun that size, um, you're going to notice it, and you get used to it after a while. Um, and for me, it's it's my lifestyle choice and, and my, uh, my choice on what gun I choose to use. So that's why I chose to go with that. Um, as far as the actual gun, the way it's set up itself, um, flashlight is a must on a defensive pistol. You've got to be able to identify what you're looking at. You've got to be able to gather information and evaluate your threat, address it the best way possible. Flashlights can also be a really good deterrent and intimidating for somebody to take away their uh, vision at nighttime and that sort of thing. Um, the majority of violent encounters statistically happen at nighttime. Um, my experience as a cop, uh, I found that all my violent encounters happen during the daytime. Uh, but that being said, uh, for most people, it happens at nighttime. So, um, but there could even be a situation during the day where you go into a dark area or a dark building and you need the light. So if you're gonna do one thing to your gun out of the box, more or less, I would recommend a good light. I swear by Surefire, um, they're probably some of the most dependable lights out there. I've used a bunch of others like M-Force and Streamlight. Um, I've had 
those lights fail on me. So typically I stick with Surefire when I uh, am selecting a light. Um, or mod light for rifle lights, but we'll get into that stuff at another video. Um, the Hollow Sun 507C, one of the most reliable red dots out there. And to me, for the price point, you can't beat it. Um, and that's the thing it comes down to, is these things are, are pretty cheap comparable to like an RMR or an SRO. Um, even a little cheaper than the Delta Point Pros, which is another uh, favorite of mine as far as handgun uh, optics go. Some people are very hesitant with the hand, handgun optics. Uh, one, because they require a higher standard of proficiency with your fundamentals in order to have that dot show up in that window reliably every time you do your draws and press outs and that sort of thing. Um, but two, it's an electronic device on the gun now. And people see that as a reliability issue because it's not mechanical. Um, and I will say this, in my personal experience from working at a shooting range, I found more times where people's iron sights on their handguns failed them by falling off or coming loose versus quality optics. That said, um, and I have seen irons, like literally the posts shear off before, more than I have seen these optics go down. In fact, I cannot remember a single time I have seen somebody's optic go down at the range for no reason. It has always been uh, a mounting issue, if, or they were using some sort of cheap Chinese knockoff. Um, but as far as the quality ones, uh, I would say Hollow Sun, Loophole, Delta Point, uh, Trijicon RMR, uh, Aimpoint Acro, Trijicon SRO, um, those ones right there, those are pretty uh, reliable ones. Those are the pretty typical ones that you see out there, and there's probably a few others I haven't mentioned, but um, getting a good one like that will allow you to do certain things that iron sights just won't let you do. Um, a much more precise point of aim. It allows you to target focus, which is awesome. Um, allows you to shoot under night vision as well. So to me, the ease of use of just looking through a simple window and finding a dot and putting that on your uh, target or your threat is, is much better than lining up iron sights. Uh, so that's kind of my two cents with that. Uh, now you notice I don't run a rear iron sight. That's because I trust that I've got a reliable um, red dot sight on my gun. There's not really a need for it. If you want to have backup irons, by all means, do it. Um, but uh, it's not necessarily needed in in that situation, especially if you are taking care of your gun. I, I check mine every morning, like when I, part of my daily routine, you know, you get up, you brush your teeth, blah, blah, blah. Um, I take my gun out and I check the flashlight to make sure it's working and I check the red dot to make sure it's working. Um, and about every year or or so, um, I will change out the battery on it because the battery lasts a very long time. And if I am going out to train with it for, you know, eight hours of training, I will switch it to the uh, solar mode if I know I'm just doing training and I'm outside in the bright sunlight and I've never had an issue with that. So that way it saves me from using the battery because this one does have a, a solar mode uh, as well. You don't want that for normal concealed, concealed carry though. So that said, what other equipment might you need to go along with this? Because it's not just about having a, uh, a cool gun. Um, and I apologize guys for the wind and for the lighting. It's a little bit weird, but I have to do these outside because I've got, you know, kids and a lot of noise inside the house. Um, a good flashlight. Um, I cannot tell you how many times I use this. It's, it's gotta be daily. Um, uh, and I have been carrying a flashlight forever. And the thing is a lot of people that don't carry them, they use their phone and they don't realize that they, how often they use that, or they ask somebody like me who they know has a flashlight on them to use their flashlight. And people borrow this all the time. So um, this is a Modlite PLH version two. Um, that's the model of it right there. Let's see if it'll focus on that, maybe not. Um, but that's the model of it right there. And uh, this is their handheld version. It comes with two, two uh, rechargeable 18650 batteries, which is awesome. Um, it's got a great performance to it. And it, I bought this little clip and this little ring thing so I can do stuff with it. So I scan around like this and then flip it around and then you can grab your gun and I can still have it without dropping it. I can still retain the light. So um, allows me to, a little bit of capability. That's kind of a funny little thing, but um, yeah, the switchback. So, um, but yeah, that's my light. Uh, another good thing uh, I would recommend for everybody to carry is a good knife. Uh, this is a Kershaw. This is one of the Emerson uh, edition knives of theirs. I don't know the exact model, uh, but these are so useful, obviously, every day having a good knife. Uh, things like, you know, e either if you're out camping or something for the day, uh, you might be preparing food or uh, you might be, um, 
you know, opening stuff up, opening up packaging on stuff like that. Um, you might also be using it in a life saving situation uh, to pry something open, um, to cut a seat belt, uh, that sort of thing. So um, I've used uh, knives a lot of times and actually during my first uh, use of a tourniquet, which we'll get to next, I, I had to cut some clothing with a knife. So. Um, which brings me to the next thing, which is medical equipment. So you got all this stuff on you. You've got a gun now. You've got your knife and your flashlight. Um, you're more likely to need medical equipment than you are to need weapons, um, just statistically speaking. So because there's things like car accidents, people falling, uh, you know, uh, factory incidents where somebody at work, you know, tries to catch something with their legs and ends up stabbing themselves in the leg inadvertently. So uh, stupid stuff like that happens all the time. It's really, really good to have something like this, like a tourniquet on you. If you're only gonna carry one piece of medical equipment, I'd say carry a tourniquet. This is a CAT tourniquet, C-A-T, just like the animal. Uh, it stands for Combat Applications Tourniquet. It does an awesome job. I also like the Soft T tourniquet, the, the wide ones. Uh, and admittedly, I like the Rats tourniquets, even though there's a lot of um, controversy that surrounds them. But whatever you decide, just make sure it's a you know a quality one. It's not some cheap knockoff one. Get get one of those, the cat, the soft T wide, or the rat's tourniquet. Those are my three recommendations for tourniquet. There's a few other out there that I, I know of are good, but uh, to be honest, I don't remember the names right now. But this is something I would carry every day. I usually just stick this in my back pocket. Some people put these in the waistband. Some people, you know, um, put them wherever else. So yeah, guys, um, that's kind of a little bit about concealed carry. And like, for those of you who are gonna get into that, what I would recommend, um, something like this gives you a lot of capability. If you're looking for something smaller but similar to this, uh, look at the Glock 19 because it can accommodate pretty much all the optics on the market and accommodate the same flashlight as well. Um, and if you are looking for something more uh, thinner than that, the Glock 43X or 48 is my recommendation. Uh, there is a company that makes aftermarket mags. I've heard mixed things about, but they carry like 15 rounds. A little harder to get a reliable flashlight for those guys, and and a, a, uh, and optic options are limited on it, but Holosun does make one for it. Uh, and then again, the other support equipment I would say for starting off, if you don't have anything, uh, is a good flashlight. Uh, I recommend Surefire or Modlite. Rechargeable would be a preference. Um, a good uh, knife to work with and a tourniquet. So that being said, guys, uh, I hope this was useful for some of you who are trying to figure this stuff out still. Um, and if there's any questions, because there's a lot of stuff I didn't go into depth on and didn't cover um, in this video. Uh, but yeah, if there's, if there's any questions, please comment, uh, DM me or, or whatever, uh, and I will try to answer those as best I can or make another video if I get a bunch of questions on something. So with that said, stay safe, guys, and God bless.